Banditos, today is a massive day for the first descendant. Patch 1.14 just dropped in. Yeah, you guessed it. Ultimate Freyna is finally here. And you can farm her today. But hold on. That's just the tip of the update iceberg. I mean, this patch is packed. New vendor, harder infiltrations with better rewards, easier leveling, reactor farming, a new Colossus fight. The list goes on. So if you're wondering what's new, what's worth your time, and what's going to make you rage, yep, we've got you covered. Stick around because we're diving into all the patch notes, answering your burning questions, and breaking down the good, the bad, and uh, what were they thinking? Moments in patch 1.14. Tox makes it exciting! All right, let's start with the big ones. Yes, Ultimate Freyna is finally here. No, unlocking her is not like it was when you unlocked Haley. So that's good news. You can actually farm her today. So if you're ready to go full Freyna, you might want to clear your schedule. There's been a lot of questions on what was Ultimate Freyna's core attire. It's going to be the white outfit that was originally shown on Freyna when she was first promoted. The outfit that was most recently promoted is part of her Freyna bundle, and I like it. But about the new vendor, ETO, zero? Yeah, he's here, but not really. He shows up on Fridays and stays for the weekend, so you won't be able to access him today, but he made the update. Gotta love that part-time gig life, right? Oh, and remember that terrifying Colossus Death Stalker and all the promos? Yeah, she's here too, but you'll have to take down Gluttony first if you haven't done that. Good news is I just put out a guide on that, and spoiler, they nerfed him. More on that in a minute. I quickly want to touch on XP. I know a lot of you are frustrated on how slow leveling can feel in the first Descendant. Good news, they boosted XP. A lot. The new harder 400% infiltrations are here, and let me tell you, enemies now spawn like they had too much coffee. It's intense. More enemies, faster pace, big rewards. It's chaos, but in a good way. Plus, we've got updates to the defense mode, like special ops. No patch notes on those, but I went in just to test because I, I needed to know I do these a lot. And yeah, things feel way faster, like twice as fast. Casual players, don't worry. The pace is intense, but still doable. If I can survive it with Bunny, you're good. So I tested this myself in Echo Swamp just a little bit. And let me tell you, enemies now spawn like they had too much coffee. And it's a little bit intense. I had a hard time being at all places at all times, which you could typically do with Bunny. The spawns were fast enough that I wasn't able to get there before they spawned to spawn camp. Yeah, it's a lot faster. So I tested XP in here to see what the reward system is like. It needs more testing, so don't rely on this too much. But I managed to level my weapon from level 20 to almost 25 in basically no time. That's like 200 XP in what felt like really minutes. So if you've been dreading that grind for weapon leveling or character leveling, this patch just made things a whole lot smoother. Plus there's XP boosts in infiltrations too. We'll go over that. Now the elephant in the room, the reactor farming feature. It doesn't appear it made today's cut. Womp womp. But fingers crossed we get an update from the dev soon on what's the deal there. Meanwhile, Freyna's quest is live, so when you're ready, dive into her story. I'm sure it's packed with emotions and explosions that are green, like any good space opera should be. So to recap, Ultimate Freyna, check. New Bender, Weekend Vibes. Death Stalker Colossus, bring it. XP boost, it's real. Reactor farming, not yet. But there's so much more, and trust me, you don't want to miss out on the chaos. If you're gearing up to dive into this patch, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what part of 1.14 has you the most hyped. Or what's already driving you crazy? Let's get into the details. Let's do this. Okay, let me let you know how this is gonna go. So I'm just gonna go through these as quickly as possible. But later, starting as early as today, I'm gonna break each one of these major content sections down in chunks and go deeper into them and get the details that you need to know. Because there's a lot in here and we're gonna be busy for a while. Okay, so the patch is live. It's Thursday, October 10th, all platforms. And yes, the new descendant, Ultimate Freyna, is here. So she's been added. So you have to use regular Freyna or the Ultimate Freyna, because you can also buy her, 
to activate Freyna's character quest. Or you can wait until you earn Ultimate Freyna, which you could actually do today, by the way, to do the same. And when Freyna's character quest is fully completed, you will receive the chest attachment, Old Wounds. All right, Ultimate Freyna skill modules. So new mods, I'll go in how to get these later. So Toxic Mixtures, Freyna's passive skill contagion links is changed to Toxic Mixture. So when equipped, the skill module will trigger Necrosis instead of Room zero trauma as enemies gain more stacks of necrosis. Your firearm attack increases when you shoot at them. And if enemy reaches max stacks, your firearm critical hit rate also increases. That's pretty cool. Venom injection. Defense mechanism is changed to venom injection. Venom injection consumes resources to recover your shield and increase skill power modifier. Very neat. While inflicting corrosion on enemies instead. Enemies inflicted with corrosion suffer reduced toxin resistance making them more vulnerable to toxic attacks. That'd be cool to run with multiple Freynas, by the way. Added ultimate Freyna amorphous patterns. That's right, you can farm her the traditional way. So patterns, you know, 12, et cetera, et cetera, can no longer be acquired, but if you already have these, then you can use them as before. So they added an AB variant. To this so you can see 12 ab 39 ab etc so you can acquire ultimate frame enhanced sales blueprint stabilizer blueprint spiral catalyst blueprint and code from these amorphous materials oh my there are a lot of new modules i can't wait to dive deep on these but Haley's skill modules are here i know you've been waiting for these so super cooled kuiper round using the unique weapon reduces firearm attack and fire rate but increases weak point damage in return so slower is more apparently also successful weak point attacks recover your shield instead of your mp the increase in weak point damage decreases on firing the unique weapon but increases again on successful weak point attacks that's pretty cool that's interesting all right, cryogenic cluster shot. The cryo effect is changed to cryogenic. Using a firearm to attack an inflicted with cryogenic deals additional AOE damage to nearby enemies, making this a useful skill module for clearing out common monsters. Yes, let's mob with Haley finally. All right, new modules added new ultimate and rare. So these are the gold and the purple ones to the existing module groups like strike critical hit damage and luck critical hit damage and firearm critical hit damage. We've added modules that can enhance skill power and firearm attack to diversify the selection of weapons and descendants with low crit hit rate and critical hit damage like Freyna. So this is really cool because it sucks to throw on a bunch of crit mods on a weapon for a descendant that's not gonna really be boosting crits too much. So you feel like you're kind of wasting slots, but what else are you gonna do? So let me just pick a few of these out. Let's start with hyper focus. So firearm critical hit damage on skill critical hit up to 12.4%. Skill critical hit damage on firearm critical hit up to 10%. This effect does not stack with each other. By loading skill critical hit on your descendant, you're also increasing firearm critical hit damage. So that's pretty cool. Non-attribute amplification. So non-attribute skill power up to 65% critical hit damage up to negative 140. I think they're trying to do here is make sure that you can't have both. So that's what the negative is about. So for descendants that you don't want to crit on, you could just power up that NA. Interesting. Fire amplification, fire skill power up to 65% and then the same down. So it looks like they just did this for all of the attribute types. It changes here, non-attribute integration. So non-attribute skill power up to 28% and then crit hit damage up to 10. So you're getting a little bit of both. And then fire integration, it looks like they do the same with all of the elements there, uh, tech, fusion, and so on and so forth. And you can go either crit damage or crit hit rate. Let's look at charge amplification. So firearm attack up to 67%. Wow, that's huge. And then crit hit damage up to negative 40. Wow, that's cool. That will actually be nice on Freyna. And then they have it for each type of ammo and then weapon variant. Yeah, that's cool. I can't wait to use those. I think that'll be a big change to our descendants. Honestly, I do. And personally, I like descendants that use both their weapons and skills when I can. All right, Death Stalker external components. I'm a big fan of external components and I think a lot of them need a rework. That's another discussion, but let's see what they're bringing us. So distorted resolve set, huge. All right, two pieces set effect it increases firearm attack when using assault rifles or submachine guns cool so fallen hope anybody freyna's gun all right four pieces set effect increases toxic skill yeah definitely fallen hope 
because we're going to get an increase in toxic skill power. Uh, this would also be good for the Thunder Cage if you like that one. And then the Python. Wait, who doesn't like the Thunder Cage? All right, increases toxic skill power proportional to the amount of HP lost. All right, so that's like Annihilation. And recovers shield each time you inflict a debuff on an enemy. So use your poison and, wow, build shield. Successfully destroying the part of a Colossus grants the Exaltation effect. And while under this effect, your skill attacks fire projectiles that deal additional toxic damage and apply the Desolution effect to the Colossus. That sounds crazy. Your skill attacks fire projectiles. That that sounds, I gotta see this. I gotta get my hands on this set. There's gonna be like green fireworks everywhere. So the desolation effect weakens all attack of the Colossus incrementally as it stacks. So what's neat about this is it looks like it will also be useful outside of Colossus fights. Neat. All right, the next one is called the Invader Set. So two piece of set effect increases max shield. That's good. That could be good for Enzo. Four piece set effect, defeating an enemy increases skill duration based on the number of stacks. That's also good for Freyna and Enzo, by the way, because you want his drone up all the time. And also increases tech skill power modifier. That's for Freyna and dimension skill modifier. Also for Freyna. So really good. These are both great Freyna sets. All right, new ultimate weapon. We get the Frost Watcher Scout Rifle. We saw a little bit of this. New ultimate weapon Frost Watcher will be added. All right, landing critical hit on an enemy from beyond a certain distance grants the cold surveillance effect and hitting the weak point of an enemy from beyond a certain distance grants the sub-zero sensation effect. Not big on the distance thing personally, but we'll see how it works. Cold surveillance reduces the enemy's chill resistance incrementally as it stacks and sub-zero sensation increases your chill skill power. Defeating an enemy grants the chill sink effect and while under this effect, the movement speed reduction due to Haley's Cold Fury effect is ignored. Oh my God, she's going to move faster. This is going to be her mobbing weapon. Yeah, yeah, we like it. Okay, highest difficulty infiltration operation. 400%. It's here. Let's tell you more about it. So a new highest difficulty dungeon has been added to 13 infiltration operation. I think that's all of them. A hard difficulty 400% score multiplier is available in dungeons where the invasion has occurred okay so it's in the same zone but i did already do one of these and you don't have to do the invasion to get access to the 400 percent so you could do this one and then do your invasion and then continue to do the 400 percent so after clearing the invasion you can still use the 400 percent score multiplier until the next invasion refresh then it's just going to be in a different zone the types of rewards for the highest difficulty infiltration ops and those for the hard difficulty infiltration ops are essentially the same. So you're just gonna get more of those rewards. Feeding the named monster gives standard ETA vouchers. As a completion reward, you will receive high precision exchange components, which are important for re-rolling your weapons and maybe the reactors, we'll see. And remember, you're gonna get two named bosses at the end of these, the commanders. They each end up dropping four vouchers. So in one run, I got eight vouchers. I don't know if that's a lot yet. We'll see what the vendor requires. Probably more than eight. New vendor, ETA Zero. I don't know about that name. What does this name mean? Anybody? Okay, ETA is available every Friday through Monday. So only on the weekends. So we'll see him tomorrow. And I'm in the Pacific Standard Time. So he'll come in at midnight on Friday. So really Thursday night. So tonight. So you can sell the blueprints you have. Available, for, you have to have Mastery Rank 10. So if you're new to the game, get there. And then you can purchase various items with standard ETA vouchers. And these can be obtained from those ops. And then exchange supplies. You can purchase various items with premium ETA vouchers. And premium ETA vouchers can be obtained by selling blueprints. So you can carry up to 600 standard and premium ETA vouchers. These can be found in your inventory and do not take up consumable slots. There's now hair dyeing. So they added features to dye the hair of head skins that show hair. Added 44 hair dyes for dyeing hair. Congratulations. Added new products. So added the Ultimate Descendant Bundles, Ultimate Freyna Bundle, and Premium Ultimate Freyna Bundle. There's a director's comment on this one. So we accept the feedback from our descendants regarding the exclusive spawn effect and back attachments in the previous bundles. So they're making those universal. Uh, additionally, we are working on improving the exclusive spawn effects and back attachments from previous bundles to make them universally usable. So they're not yet universal, but they will be. Um, and then they added a bunch of skins for Halloween. 
And when you enter into Albion, you're gonna see the Halloween theme. And I can tell you, it's pretty cool. Even the music, it kind of feels like you're in Hogwarts, by the way, a little bit, uh, which is kind of amusing. And they were really thorough. I'm telling you, it's everywhere. It's Halloween, it feels cool. I hope they continue this, I love that. So a bunch of pumpkin heads and stuff like that. So yeah, pretty neat, definitely festive. It feels like we're celebrating. Content improvements. So they added a recruitment tab to the chat. You can post to recruit or apply for a party in this tab. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. So you gotta pull up your chat area and then uh, there's a tab here that says recruit. So there you go. So they changed the immunity gimmick for some name monsters from destroying spheres to destroying summoned objects. Um, Colossi no longer stray too far out of the battlefield during intercept battles. That's nice. Kind of like Gluttony, he stays relatively central. Added additional makeshift camps to the shipment base, the hatchery and the mountaintops in the White Knight Gulch. Oh good, so you can travel around faster. Change the location of the void fusion reactor in the hatchery in the White Knight Gulch. Change the condition for returning to camp after aborting missions. So two aborted missions to four aborted missions. Infiltration operations now reward additional firearm proficiency. There it is. I told you. It's there. More firearm experience. They didn't say how much though. So we're going to have to test that. Look forward to doing that for you. Some infiltration ops now reward more descendant experience too. That's cool. So there's been some that have been getting a lot of attention because they do well on the experience for descendants. So they're up in the other ones to meet those. So these other ones will hopefully meet us there. More testing on the way. So fix the main quest to reward level 100 firearms, reactors, and enhancement materials. Players now revive with 100% shield. Players now have three seconds to cancel the start of a private op in intercept battles. Added a restart button to HUD. Yes, thank you. To enable an immediate restart after the end of an intercept battle. I hated going back to that menu. That's gonna be a nice QOL. This button is located below the Move to Albion button. Very nice. Uh, those small things make a big difference when you do a lot of missions. So deleted the underused 150% in infiltration ops. I was a little bit mixed about that. I don't use those anymore. I'm always doing the upper ones, but maybe other people are. So if that's you, speak up in the comments section so the devs hear your voice. Descendants, change the missions that drop Freyna stabilizers. So when Freyna uses a skill to inflict room zero trauma, she now also inflicts toxic reaction, panic, despair, decay, or nightmare, depending on the skill used. Didn't we already get that update? Let me look at Freyna because that's, I don't know what that's saying. Now we see panic and there's toxic reaction. They actually made a change here. So, so when she uses a skill to inflict room zero trauma, she now also inflicts toxic reaction, panic, despair. So they're saying you're gonna get room zero trauma and toxic reaction or room zero trauma and panic, for example, if you're using venom trauma, which is her first skill, I think I get it. So before you would hit a target with a skill and that target would only get room zero trauma. It was his neighbor or a nearby enemy or a nearby enemy that would get the panic if you were using the first skill. So now it looks like when you hit that target, the first target, target number one, he's gonna get toxic reaction and panic and then the other guy who's not standing in the puddle is just gonna get panic. Still, if they're both standing in the puddle, then they're both gonna get toxic reaction and they're both gonna get panic. Okay, we'll have to, that'll be confusing for people, so we'll have to do an update on that. The plague body armor effect, that's her number two, uh, granted by Freyna's skill defense mechanism and toxic stimulation is now renewed when the skills are used again. Yeah, what, what happened before? Okay, improved Kyle's repulsion dash and, and collision instinct skills to hit environmental objects such as gas cylinders. Esimo can now use the time bomb skill, so that's his number two, while shooting a firearm or using other skills. Oh good, he's getting even faster. He's a good descendant. If you haven't broken into him, boy oh boy. I know Freyna is really exciting, but Esimo's updates are really cool. I'll try to get my build out to you as soon as possible. My build's done, so very fun. Improved the research list to display the owned indicator in lower level research as well as descendant research. I saw that, that's nice, you're gonna like that. Improved the research list to show whether the research results exist and how many. Miscellaneous, added reactors to the hard difficulty field, allowing you to obtain them when needed. When obtaining the reactor, not as rotation reward, 
and hard difficulty missions, outposts, or fusion reactors, you will acquire reactor with specific attributes and RK based on each battlefield. I took a look. It's not super exciting to me on the surface, but we'll have to see in some testing. For example, right now I'm looking at this and it's saying that if I want like a frame a reactor, like toxic with tech, then I can go to Vesper's Fortress, Timberfall or Frozen Valley to get it. And now we're not talking about the filter system. So we're not talking about this because if we look for toxic and tech, it's gonna be in Moongrave Basin. So it's not talking about this. We're talking about going to Vespers and then looking at individual missions to see what's the reward in case you're farming for something specific that's outside of the rotations for the week because it sucks having to wait an entire week to farm something. So here, for example, there it is. So the there's a rare toxic tech reactor and you got a 50% chance to get it. Yeah, let me go to a different zone because there's no reactor, but the reactor is almost always dropped rare so let's look at we go to frozen valley okay so let's go to fortress and then frozen valley here's one here um yeah so it's also rare items here and it's not even showing up on that mission so it's not in the reactor am i not in frozen valley i mean i am right i mean i don't even see it here so it's a little bit confusing on what this is trying to do for us but i see a toxic dimension but it says i should be able to see a toxic tech in this zone and I'm just not. So I don't know if you have any ideas. Curious, I'm sure we all are. All right, so the Roly Polies and Kingfishers summoned by Colossi in intercept battles now use melee attacks less frequently. Thank you. Lowered the difficulty of the intercept battle Gluttony so they reduced his HP and attack so he'll be faster to kill and he hit less hard. Impurity now reduces the wipe attack gauge further. So it always did that, but now this should make things go faster because there'll be less of that. So reduce the speed at which the wipe attack gauge fills up. So that's really a double nerf on that. Remove the ice effect inflicted when the impurity explodes. So less painful. Increase the expansion limit of equipment, inventory, and storage slots by 200. Uh, before it was 1,000. So I think you have to buy all that and it's very expensive. What they should be doing is decreasing the cost. So as far as descendants, let's look at Freyna's. Um, so fix an issue where the animation effect of Freyna's Room Zero Trauma was displaying incorrectly. And then they fixed the issue where the plague body armor effect from Freyna's defense mech and toxic stim skills could both be granted. Uh, with this change, only the plague body armor effect granted last will remain in the effect for the duration. And then effective skill modules, contagion, toxic stim, neurotoxin synthesis. Uh, they fixed an issue where decimator and lethal infection did not activate due to certain debuffs. The last stand module was not being applied correctly. And same with the preemptive strike, so they fixed those. Well, wow, that's a lot. And from my experience, not all changes are actually made in patch notes. So I'm sure we will be discovering more together. So look forward to more videos on day one of the new season updates. And be sure to let me know what you are most excited about or disappointed with in the comments below. Thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Tuxedo Bandito. That's Tito Bandito. One and only. And this was another episode of The First Descendant. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The First Descendant. And if you like videos like this, check out the one I have recommended for you right here. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. When you buy or download anything for the first Descendant, be sure to use Tux's creator code to support the channel. Easy peasy. Follow me.